Working on the Caterpillar TC30 forklift. I just used a floor jack jacked it up here and put some blocks under the mast. The mast is pinned right to the frame of it. His wheels are off the ground. I zipped all these bolts out and then pried the wheel off with a pry bar. And it looks like I'm about to get some shoes. The liners are just laying inside the wheel. This should come right apart. The other side apart and the return spring was broke. Those boots just fell off the wheel cylinder. But the big concern here is that brake line's kind of wet. I took the floorboards out here. There's the master right there. So we went to go take the cap off the master cylinder just to see what's going on and it was tight. Let's just put the impact to it and it just twisted the head right off. But we're gonna go ahead and take this master out to see if this brake pedal springs back to where it wants to be. Luckily our new master has a cap on it. I took the master out. This pedal is still tight. I think we'll just keep working on that and lubing it up until we get it to rotate freely. Got it completely free now. Back on this forklift, I don't even know how many weeks it's been. They made a decision on these brake lines. They were pretty beat up right around the fittings. I'm just gonna change them out. I already got this side done with some NICOP lines. Both the left and the right side go to a common bleeding point in front. So both the bleeders are right here. Got our brake shoes here. I had the original brake shoes reshoed. Cost me 50 bucks. Online, each individual shoe is like $75 a piece. I got new brake springs. A local forklift store wanted $51 a piece for these. I got these both shipped for 35 bucks. So parts are readily accessible for this deal. I could have got wheel cylinders, but I found some wheel cylinder rebuild kits. I've never done this before, so this is the first. There are no bleeders on these wheel cylinders because of the common bleeding point. I got a hone here. I'm gonna pop this apart and see if I can uh, hone that out. I'm making those brake lines out of that NICOP line with a brake quip uh, double flaring tool. You've seen this in the past, on my channel, so I'm not going to show it again, but the setup works great. Let's take a look in here. If I break that aluminum puck, I'm screwed. Inch and an eighth. Tough to get this shot, but I don't really see any pits in it. I think it's gonna work. That first kit must have been a partial kit. Uh, this one's got dust boots, fortunately. But this puck's got a little chip out of it. I'm thinking I could actually make this on the lathe if I had to. I'm just gonna run it the way it is, of course. So let's see here. I think I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil on these. Same with this. There you have it. One amateur rebuild on a uh, wheel cylinder. It's in there. Good luck doing that if you're using steel lines. Side two here, and I'm not even attempting to get the line off. I think I got the fittings loose, but I got a mini bolt cutter, just cutting them off. Gotta keep track of which one goes where. This front one goes to the bleeder. I'm having to heat this one to try to get these off, and I want to snap that bolt in the wheel cylinder. Oh yeah. I want to fit these shoes on here and they clearly have to go on this pin to get uh, up into here. But these pins are like stationary. I'm thinking how can that work? If that's stationary this will never work. I went over this side, same thing, and I just started beating it back and forth with a pin punch. And I'm pretty sure that this is supposed to pivot right here. So I'm going to work on these, get them all to pivot. 
These brakes probably haven't worked in like 30 years. Starting to get it together. Wondering where that piece went. Busted out the parts book. It's got some pretty decent diagrams. So that clearly goes in the bottom there. There's some updated part numbers. 14's that spring and 7's the shoe. One of the key takeaways from this project is you need a parts book to be able to work on an old piece of equipment like this. Got it in there, I think it goes like that. I wanted to grease this bearing, but I just got too many other projects. So I'm gonna get that at a later date. This machine ain't gonna move but 100 yards probably the next year anyway, if it's lucky. Got both sides of the brakes together. I did have to tack weld these pivot points in the back. I was working those free. Here's the new master. It actually sits in the machine level, so I think I'm just gonna bolt it up in the machine. I had one of these in the box, and I'm gonna bench bleed it before I hook up the banjo bolt for the lines. I got all these pieces freed up. Brake pedal's free. Here is the master installed. You can see how far up this brake pedal is, but I think the floor is going to stop it probably about there or something. So I'm just going to keep going so there's no more bubbles in it. These wheels are pretty heavy. I'm just going to take some 60. Scuff up that braking surface on both sides. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the wheel back on so I can uh, pressure bleed this with the master. Wheel's on, missing a lug nut. That kind of irritates me, so I'm gonna order another one. But it's spinning, that's a good sign. We got these brakes bled out. Got pretty good pedal. Like I said, I think the floor is gonna keep this up. But we got another problem here where it doesn't always wanna start with the key. But I got a start switch hooked right up to the starter. It cranks over. And it's tracing that wire to the S terminal back. And it goes to, looks like a safety switch on the hydrostatic drive. So I think we're gonna take that off and jumper it and see if uh, it fixes. Yes. So we ran a jumper across that. That didn't do it. We tested voltage, we're getting seven volts there. We're getting a, a three volt voltage drop at the switch. So I think we're just losing too much voltage by the time it got to that starter solenoid. And I want to clean all this up, but I just don't have time right now, so I'm going to put it back together. I'd actually like to put a tachometer on this and get all the gauge lighting working. But for now, we just ran a, uh, a wire direct from the starter switch to the starter. You want to hit that? Yeah. So it's working. I think if I, I might, be able to, I might be able to take that switch apart and clean it up. But for now, we're gonna screw it back together and this is what we got. So it's stopping the wheel. Yeah. Thanks. Back her up once. Yeah, that is way up there, eh? Yeah. The triple mask. Yeah. 